Awesome. Give God a hand clap of praise. Come on. I can't tell you what an awesome evening we had. If you was here last night, throw your hand up. Come on. Did you enjoy that last night? Come on. I had a lady come to me right after the, the devotion, Rob Smets, uh, after he got through sharing, a lady came up to me. She said, Pastor, I want you to know I rededicated my life tonight. Come on. Give God the glory. And uh, I'm telling you what an, what an awesome evening it was. And then I want to share this with you. Psalms 47. It says, oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. The Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. He will subdue, subdue the people. He will subdue the people under, under us and the nations under his feet. Let me tell you, God is awesome. God is awesome. And I am so honored that, that God has uh, given us a place here in Athens and blessed Blessed uh, living for the Brand Cowboy Church to be able to make a difference in families' lives. And last night, I saw moms and dads and their kids, and what a blessing uh, it was to get to sow into these people last night. And, uh, and I just can't say enough great things about our great and awesome God. So with that, give God a hand clap of praise, yes. And I want to pray for us, and then we're going to ask Mr. Rod to come up here and fill y'all in on what's happening next, because I don't know. Let's pray. Father, we love you. You're an awesome God today. And Father, I pray every day we learn to trust you more, call on you more, exalt you more. God, we want to exalt you high today, not that we can exalt you higher than you are, but in our life, we exalt you. I pray that over the people today, Lord, that we just learn to give you the glory that is due your precious name. You gave us the gift of eternal life. You paid the price with your son's blood, and through that we can be redeemed today, God. Nothing we can do makes us worthy of that. All we do is take the gift. I want to thank you for that gift today. I pray that that gift would reach every heart in this place that don't know you today, Father, that they would just accept your gift, your great gift, the greatest gift we could ever have. And Father, I just pray that you would bless this service today. I want to thank you for Mr. Doyle, and I want you to bless him, use him mightily for your kingdom's sake, and it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Come on, Rod. When you get done with this, you hang it back in here. I wanted to tell you what to do. Oh, there's, there's you one. You use that one. I'll put this in back. <laughs> okay, here you go. Miss Elizabeth wants to say something before we get started. Okay, I've got two things. I am holding the sign-up sheets for Fall Festival. Fall Festival is Tuesday night. Uh, I have 20 slots that need workers. We have a meeting immediately after church in the West Room. You don't want me to put your name on here because you might get a job you don't like. So come to the meeting and sign up. Uh, and we, uh, we will be working beginning about 10 o'clock on Tuesday, getting everything set up. Also, the ladies have a field trip to Waco scheduled for Friday. If you are going with us, please sign up so we know who's coming. We're leaving at 8.30, whether you're here or not, though. Thank you, Mrs. Elizabeth. How's everybody doing today? Good, good. It's, it's pretty exciting to see something like last night, to see people show up. But the neatest thing that I like is to, care, to hear somebody share the gospel about Jesus Christ, how that man has been changed, and as Rob spoke about how he can change our life. One percent every day. At a hundred days, you're a hundred percent changed. Amen? Makes me think about, do we just exist or do we thrive? 
I want to thrive. I, get, I got sick and tired of just existing for so many years. But when Jesus started doing things in my life, I started to thrive. And that's what I hope everybody that was out there yesterday, I hope they leave this place and say, man, I want to thrive. Amen? So I'm going to share a few uh, things that we need to share. How many visitors are here today? That's the first thing. Please raise your hand. These men have come down. They'll hand you a card. Please fill it out and give it to the welcome booth, which is out in the foyer on the left-hand side as you leave. And they'll give you a... a a bag with some cookies in it, which are going to be very, very good to eat. And then they'll also give you some information about our church. And we would like you to fill out that card, and we'd like to know something about you, too. So please fill out your card and, and give it to the uh, at the welcome booth. Uh, we had that event last night. I need to mention this. Cleanup. Tomorrow there's going to be some cleanup being done out in the arena. So if you can be a part of that, please show up. What time are we going to start, Frankie? 10-ish in the morning. So if you show up, uh, tell Frankie to hurry up and get out there and help you. So he, he'll be there at 10 o'clock. So it's clean up, 10 o'clock, clean up. Uh, another thing we need to mention is our directory, our church directory. If you have not had your picture taken for the directory, please see Joanna Rhodes, and she will help you and get your picture taken so we can know who you are and know something about you. Another thing I need to mention is right after church today, there is a meeting for the fall festival immediately after church, and then the fall festival will be October 26th in the arena. There will be no uh, arena events, just the fall festival, and I believe we're going to eat outside in there. The other thing we need to mention is we want to honor our veterans on November the 7th. There is a sign-up sheet out there in the foyer. Please sign up if you're a veteran. We want to love on you guys, and thank you for the sacrifice that you made for our country. So please sign up for that. And the last thing is, is this, uh, there will be a business meeting tonight. Mr. Jim, where are you at? What, what time? 6.30, so please come and at 6 o'clock. So please come and attend our business meeting, and at this time, I will turn it over to Wayne, and he's going to share about Doyle. Thank you, Rod. Uh, how many of you believe God orders our paths, our steps that we take in life? Amen? Well, I'm going to tell you, if in my life, I found that to be true. Uh, many, many years ago, uh, Kelly Barber is sitting up here on the front row. Uh, we started doing guitar business with him. And s several years back now, it's been several years ago, that he said, I want you to meet this guy. You need to meet this guy and have him at your church. And he introduced me to Doyle, and that has become a great friendship. Uh, Doyle and I talk every week, sometimes multiple times a week. And we, it's become like a little family of guys that we've all met uh, through guitars. And, uh, and I, what a great friendship and what a great man. And uh, without anything else to say, I'll let his guitar and his talent speak for the rest of it, but... Uh, please give a warm welcome today for Doyle Dykes. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. I remember I was over at my daughter's house. And she's got about four dogs, and they're all jumping over, all around me and all. And I hear, I get a phone call. And it was Wayne Jumper. And so I've never forgot your name from that. <laughs> And uh, he said, I want you to come to my church. And uh, it's, it's, well, we'll talk more about that later. He shared a birthday yesterday with my dad. His name's Kelly Barber. And he is the one that introduced us, like you say. Happy birthday, Kelly. get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory Oh 
Onward to the prize before us Soon his beauty will behold Soon the pearly gates will open We will tread the streets of gold When we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be When we all see Jesus We'll sing and shout the victory Now some folks would sing When we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be When we all see Jesus We'll sing and shout the victory Now that's more the Baptist way And I like Baptists, I married one and, uh, but that's the way you'd sing it. But my granddaddy was a choir director at our church, and we went to a church of God, you know, Holy Ghost church. You know, of course, they're all Holy Ghost churches. But he would sing. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. And that's the way I learned to play it. I was sitting over here with a with a J45 Gibson guitar, and I didn't go. I went onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will be whole. Soon the pearly gates will open. We will tread on streets of gold. When we all get to hell, sing. What a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. One more time. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus. I think we all sing that again. When we all see Jesus. One more time. When we all see Jesus. And it'll be worth it all right there. We'll sing and shout the victory. Amen. Now, my dad, uh, boy, he loved this kind of picking. And like I said, uh, uh, yesterday was his birthday as well. So I want to do something in honor of my dad. And Kelly refretted this old 1965 Jaguar. And one of my first guitars was a Jaguar, Fender Jaguar. And I was 13 years old. And my papa would let me uh, play in church. Play us a song. <laughs> On my Jaguar. Say here, goodbye world, goodbye.
That's the way my dad uh, loved to play. And uh, before he died, he was a finger picker. pilgrim and a stranger traveling through this wearsome land I've got a home in that yonder city good lord and it's not not made by hands I've got a father I think even the Lord knows him as Bubba who has gone to that sweet shore I'm determined to go and pick with him again over on that other shore. It's the way he'd play it. Play it, Dad. pilgrim and a stranger traveling through this wearisome land I've got a home in that yonder city good lord and it's not not made by hands and it's not not made by hands Amen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I was on the Grand Ole Opry not too long ago, and I was honoring Chet Atkins. Uh, he had passed away 20 years ago this year. I'll, can I play something I played on the Opry? Is that right? This is what I play. It's for you, Ray. Salty dog. I don't know what that is, but
Oh man, I'm just doing three chords in a cloud of dust. But we have a friend here, uh, his name is Ray, and he's a guitar picker, and he loves those old songs. And he asked me, did you know a few? Do you know this? Do you know that? I bet you knew some of those, didn't you, Ray? <laughs> well, sure. But you may not know this one. Here's a song I played on the Huckabee show a few years ago. And thanks to Kelly Barber, I'm guitar poor. And so how many have at least two guitars at home? I bet you do. Three, four, six. We better stop there. Somebody might get in trouble. <laughs> anyway, this is a song I wrote. I thought I'd do something patriotic. I'm about to do that. But I thought I'd just do this and have some fun and honor my dad especially and honor Kelly. But uh, thanks to you, Guitar Poor, one reason I wrote this song, actually it was a joke for my wife. When I was on Huckabee, he said, well, I figured he'd want to do the, me to do the patriotic stuff or something like that. He said, no, I want you to do that when you wrote for your wife. I said, that was a joke. He said, yeah, but it's fun. <laughs> okay. It all started back in 65 That's when I first realized I wanted to do something for my Lord Just like my daddy and my uncle Smitty I love guitars They sounded so pretty And I knew that's just what I was looking for My first guitar was a silver tone I wore my fingers to the bone It played so hard my fingers got so sore I knew the guitar was for me It was bound to be my destiny Ever since that time I've been guitar poor I'm guitar poor Guitar poor Oh Lord won't you help me I'm guitar poor Guitar poor Guitar poor Lord have mercy on the guitar poor well, You might be horse poor Or car poor I got flat top, star shop, seal string, gut string, solid body, hollow body, six string, 12 string, acoustic, electric, and resonators, and more. I got cutaways, non cutaways, upper cutaways, flame tops, gold tops, jumbos, dreadnoughts, double loss, triple loss. Man, I'm guitar poor. Guitar poor. Guitar poor. Oh, Lord, won't you help me? We're guitar poor, Wayne. Guitar poor. Guitar poor. Lord, have mercy on the guitar poor. Well, my wife knows it pretty well, I guess. I was mopping the floors and making the beds, and she knew I was up to something for sure. I ran outside my pickup truck. When you know it's just my luck, she says, I know you're going down to Kelly's Music Store. There's just one thing I should have grabbed first, that checkbook that was in her purse. She stood there waving it at the door. I said, come on, honey, now, baby, please just give me that checkbook so I can leave. She says, Doyle Donks, just how many guitars do you need? And I said, Guitar poor, guitar poor. Oh Lord, won't you help us? We're guitar poor. Guitar poor, guitar poor. Lord have mercy on the guitar poor. Let's pick. Chet Atkins. Guitar poor, oh Lord, won't you help me? I'm guitar poor, guitar poor, guitar poor. Lord, have mercy on the guitar poor. <laughs> One time I came here and I had 
an old Martin, uh, Pastor Smith, I had a Martin that my, my uncle had passed me. His name was, well, they all called him Smitty because his name was Smith. <laughs> and uh, I gave that guitar, I had it here. I gave it to Roy Clark. He had it for 30 years. I was pastoring the church and felt led to go back on the road. And God told me, God spoke to me. He said, I want you to give away, give away the biggest thing you have and I'll take care of everything. And I left that church debt free. And uh, but that, that it was an old Martin D45. You know, probably could have sold it and paid the church off, but I didn't. I gave it to him. And he enjoyed it all of it, the rest of his life. His wife said it was his favorite guitar. On, the, on my side of that, of course, it's amazing, but my mama said one day, well, she might give that back to you. His, and I said, I don't know. You read what you sow, not where you sow. Why don't we pray about it? Why don't we agree on that? Next thing I know, Roy's wife gave it back to me. Isn't that amazing? After 30 years. So I got the guitar back. But the one thing, talking about guitar poor, after I gave that to Roy Clark, at that time I couldn't afford to go to your store and buy a thing, Kelly. But after that, I don't think honestly that I've ever had to buy another guitar. God has been so good to me. He's just blessed me. And so... Um, I started playing, I got saved when I was 11 years old. I got saved when I was 11 years old. And, and I, I gave my heart to Christ. And I knew in my knower, did you know you can be a child and know that you're a child of God? You've accepted Christ in your heart. You can be a little child. That's how simple it is. My, <laughs> get emotional. My little granddaughter, Emmy Lou, we just love her. She's the cutest little thing, smart as a whip. I'm a granddaddy. I can brag on her a little bit, but it's my granddaughter. Our youngest granddaughter is getting baptized next Sunday. She's six. And we're, I'm taking off. We're all going. We're all going. That's a big deal to us. So isn't she a little young? Yeah, man, she's got a whole life to live for Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And so I, what a testimony. And so I got saved. I really knew for the first time, but I was a little older. I was 11 years old. Nobody told me to, Pastor, but I raised my hands to God. And I said, God, give me a job to do, and I'll always tell people about you. And, and here I am in my 60s. I'm still doing it. Didn't know I was going to be using these hands so much. i got trigger fingers still here. I've been bad, but they're still working. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And I'm still traveling, and I'm still talking about him, and still thanking the Lord every day for the gift that he's given me to Tell people about Christ. Everybody has a gift. Pastor has one. What a wonderful portrayal of his life and what he's done and his influence and favor that he had to put this event on last night. Amen. What a one. Nobody could have done that. Nobody could have done that. If I had been the new pastor, which y'all didn't ask, I was hurt. But anyway, I'm over it now. I think he's better. And, uh, but I'd, I'd probably had Ricky here or, or uh, Steve Warner or somebody. The influences that we have in life, and I believe they had to come. You know, but you have that kind of influence. I don't. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. However you can think up something to bring them in, bring them in. And man, they came in last night. Amen. I watched those folks come in. I said, you know, I got a feeling a lot of these aren't just, you know, living for the brand folks. These are community people. And they were. And that was a great idea. And you did a, that was a cool thing. I'd like to come back. I'm inviting myself, but I would, I really would. It wasn't long after I prayed that prayer, God gave me a desire to play a guitar. When I was uh, 14, I put this little medley together, still playing it. It means more to me now than any other time in my life. I was so touched last night, the way you honored God and the way you honored our country.
O oh, beautiful or spacious skies or amber waves of green for purple mountains majesty above thy fruited place America sing loud America God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea sing it again America And crown thy good with brotherhood From sea to shining sea Mine eyes have seen the glory Of the coming of the Lord He is trampling at the vintage Where the grapes of wrath are stored has loosed the faithful lightning this terrible swift sword and his truth is marching on you still believe his truth is marching on still believe that glory glory hallelujah glory Glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Sing loud. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Sing loud, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, his truth is marching on. For bless our troops today. Our first responders. Thank you, thank you for singing. Years ago I was gonna record a worship record and it just wasn't coming together. I thought, well, that's the most dear thing to me in my whole life is to do something like that. But it just wasn't working. So I called my old buddy Jimmy Capps over in Nashville, known him since I was a Grandpa Jones back in the 70s. 
And uh, I said, Jimmy, I think, I think we ought to do a fun record. I was going to do a worship record, but I think I'm ch switching gears, and, and I, it's called Country Fried Picking. <laughs> we still get requests for it. Can you send me that chicken fried picking record? Country, country, country fried chicken picking? What, whatever you call it. Anyway, it's Country Fried Picking. And uh, we, we did it at a, a Sound Emporium Studios, had some great musicians, really some of the best in the world. Paul Franklin on steel guitar, and Junior would attest to that, wherever you are, Junior. And some really great players. There you are. And uh, Dave uh, Pomeroy on bass, and uh, Steve Turner on the drums, Jimmy Capps, and uh, Dwayne Eddy came in and played. And uh, it was so much fun. We were going to mix it on the 12th of September, and I was out working. Of course, 9-11 hit. And I said, should we even go to work? Should we even go to the studio? Dwayne called me and said, come on, son, you need to go. We need to finish this. People need something to make them feel good. Let's finish this feel-good record you started. And I did. So a year later, I went back and recorded a, a worship album and the whole thing changed to songs of faith and freedom and there was a song i wrote and i wasn't trying to my kids said dad are you writing a are you writing a song for 9 11 and because it, it had this sort of a distress signal sound and i said oh, i don't know and i'd put it down and then i didn't feel worthy to do that and one of my buddies in the FBI called me. He's a guitar player. He had Doyle Dykes model. In fact, they had a whole band called the Free Agents. They were free agents because they couldn't play music and make money. <laughs> and they, they had seven Doyle Dykes models between all of them. They were my biggest fan, and I was their biggest fan. And uh, he said, Doyle, you got to finish this because that's the way you express yourself. Call to freedom.
well, I just had a first. It's never happened in my whole career, as long as I can remember. But I broke my thumb pick. <laughs> it's, uh, it's here. When I was doing that... <laughs> Broke right off. Kind of got a little thin there at the end, didn't it? You see, that's that that was the hook, the part of boom, 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 boom. I had a man come up to me one time and he said, I don't know why I'm still here. He had tears in his eyes. I said, What do you mean? He said, I was a fire chief in Brooklyn. Retired on Friday before 9-11. All the guys were there, had a party. Had the car packed and went to see my kids. Took a little vacation up in northern New York. I was nowhere near New York City on 9-11, but all my friends perished. I don't know why I'm still here. I had another man that told me, he says, I was in the uh, Pentagon. We were watching it on the, on the television. I walked over to get a cup of coffee, and my secretary sat at my desk we had a whole room full of people. And he said, about that time, the nose of that plane came in, in my office, in my very area where I was, and exploded. It said it knocked everything, it killed all those people, but it knocked so much rubble on top of me that it actually, even though it broke a lot of bones, but it saved my life. And he said, I managed to find, a, I asked God to help me, he was a Christian. And he's like a tunnel through it. I could see light, and I crawled out. It took a long time, but there was fire everywhere. I don't know how I'm alive, and I don't know why. I'm still here. And all my friends are gone. Another man in Brunswick, Georgia, he says, I, I came down here to work for national sec security, but I was in the second tower, and I experienced the, one that, the first one that fell he said, I was on a lower floor on the second tower, managed to get out. But all those people died. I don't know why I made it and why I'm still here. And this very stately man dressed up in a suit stood there and wept. And I just put my, arm on his, or my hand on his arm and I, I said, brother, we can't question things like that. These things are bigger than we are. But you're here, obviously, for a reason. God has you here for a reason. Play one more song.
I used to preach all the time, but my picking went over better than my preaching. But uh, the Lord laid something on my heart. Y'all enjoying this new normal, by the way? Are you enjoying the new normal? Tom Seals, good to have y'all here today. Thank you. From Michigan. Drove, they drove down for the weekend. Isn't that nice? Are y'all enjoying the new normal? What is the new normal? It's a current, this is going to be very boring, but I'm going to read it anyway. A current situation, it's dictionary.com, it is a current situation, social custom, etc., that is different from what has been experienced or done before, but is expected to become usual or typical. Wikipedia, which everybody trusts, a new normal is a state which an economy, society, etc., settles following a crisis when this differs from the situation that prevailed prior to the start of the crisis. It was used in relation, I thought it was a new word, to World War I. This term has been around for a long time. There's been a lot of new normals. It was used after World War I, the, uh, September 11th, the financial crisis of 07-08, and, and also the global recession from 08 to uh, 2012, and of course, COVID-19. Now, I want to give you the definition of normal. The definition, conforming to a type, standard, or regular pattern. This is real boring. Characterized by that which is considered usual, typical, or routine. That's your day. Is that your life? Normal. That's what's always been going on. It's, it's, it's stereotype life. It's just regular, typical, a normal, like normal working hours under normal circumstances, normal average every day. He had a normal childhood. It just means average, normal. Now, the opposite of normal is abnormal. <laughs> which is not really a good word. That's kind of a, it has a negative connotation to it, abnormal. But listen to this, the opposite of average is extraordinary. The opposite of average is extraordinary. That's a good word, amen? Somebody asked Chet Atkins one time, said, Chet, how would you describe your guitar picking? Oh, I don't know. I guess slightly above below average. Slightly above, below average. Hmm. Of course, we all know that's not true. But that's what he said. In fact, <laughs> when you live an average life, years, a few years ago, I laugh at this, but kind of just rubbed me the wrong way and in a sense just kind of chapped. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, but I was, I was up in Virginia, and this guy said, well, we're going to get you on this... Anyway, there was this, there was this network, and uh, they said, you got to have Dole on there because he wrote a new book with Moody Publishing, you know? And, uh, and they said, yeah, we know about Dole. But uh, this program, I mean, he just, he just ain't got no hook. Don't have a hook. That's what he said. He, and the guy asked him, so what do you mean he doesn't have a hook? Well, you know, he, his testimony, he's, he's never been out there. He's never been on drugs. He's never been an alcoholic or anything like that. I said, yeah, well, isn't that good? Well, it, it's not good for our show. This was Christian television. Can I tell you one more time? I got saved when I was 11 years old. Jesus Christ came into my heart and he changed me. I've never, I want to tell you something. I have been delivered from drugs. And for all you that haven't in a, any kind of addiction, whatever it might be, if God has delivered you and he will, if he hasn't, thank the Lord for that. That's a great testimony. But it's no less testimony for a child like my granddaughter is getting baptized next week. I hope she never gets it. God delivered her before she ever got into it. He delivered me before I ever tried it. Amen. 
I'm in the, I've been involved in the music business. I can't tell how many times that I've said, well, how come you don't drink? I don't need to. I, but I, t I told him, I, one guy not long ago, I said, well, I do. I, I'm, you said, well, you're a Christian, aren't you? I said, yeah, I drink as much as I want to. I get drunk as much as I want to. I go out on my wife as much as I want to and still be a Christian. Yeah, I just don't want to. That's the difference. He changed my life. He raised me up to a different level. He that was up here, amen, sat on the throne. He came down to our level basically to raise us up to his. He that was rich, he became poor so that we through his poverty might be rich. He came to lift us up to a different level, amen. When I got saved, I remember... Uh, I was shy, man, I, I was. I was raised on the other side of the tracks. I was raised in the city. I always dreamed of, of having a horse. And, and I loved cowboy stuff from the time I was a kid because of my Uncle Doyle. I mean, had, I still got a room full of Roy Rogers stuff and all kind of horse stuff, but I never had a horse, never had one. I bought a horse for dummies book one time and I thought, good Lord, I ain't got time for him and he ain't got time for me. That ain't, ain't fair for me or the horse. But I love them. I've always loved them. I had a buddy of mine. He had a Jaguar just like mine. He lived on the west side of Jacksonville. I lived in the inner city. And after church, between services, because we had Sunday night, I'd go over to his house, and we'd play our Jaguars and go in. And he had a horse, an old paint. And I got to ride him. And that was in Tim Hicks. I was with him just a few days ago. He's a pastor down in South Georgia. He's still one of my good buddies. Praise the Lord. In fact, I gave him that, that uh, Jaguar that I got from you. I, I presented it to him the other day. It looked just like the one he had when we were kids. Isn't that a blessing? Praise the Lord. But, what you know, I didn't have, so I didn't have, I had no hook, huh? Okay. Let me tell you. But uh, there was a talent show in the eighth grade, and I, I went out for it. what I played. That's pretty good. Any kid in the eighth grade that could do that? You'd think you'd win, wouldn't you? I lost. But, you know, I encouraged myself in the Lord. I said, well, there'd always be another time. And I played and practiced all the time got, and just tried my best, had that little Jaguar, and I went the next year, and this is what I played.
Yes, I did. I did. I won it. Thanks, Tom. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. We know that. He didn't say anything more about him. We know what the devil can do. We know who's brought on all this. Everybody blames on the Chinese or whatever. I think they have a whole lot to do with it. But I've been to China. And I want to tell you something. I felt the anointing and the power of God in China. I've laid my head on a pillow and put my hand on the other side on another pillow. And I said, Lord, I'm a long ways from you in a communist nation. But I thank you that you are here with me. You know, there's one thing about being homesick, which I was, but I was not lonely because I was not alone, and I knew that. I got up, in fact, wrote a song called Peace Over Shanghai. It's been one of my, it's on Country Fried Picking Record. You see, I, I, I've experienced a lot of things in the, because these people are not your enemy. Satan is your enemy. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But then, so don't major on that. Major on this. But I came that they may have, that they, in fact, this is the, this is the Guitar Pickers Bible. Y'all know I use the Guitar Pickers Bible. Do you know that, Pastor? The Amplified. He said, the thief comes on to skill kid. I came that they might have and enjoy life. That they might have and enjoy life. And have it, say have it, in abundance to the full till it overflows. That's the normal for us. An extraordinary life, not a new normal. The Bible says don't be conformed to this world. I used to work for an old preacher who said this old grizzled gray society that we live in, don't conform to it. Be transformed by the renewing of your minds. That you may prove for yourselves what is that good and perfect will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. In fact, I wrote that down. And, and th this is, I believe, the, uh, this is from the message. I like this too. It says, be not conformed. So here's what I want you to do. This is Romans 12, 1 and 2 in the message. Here's what I want you to do. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Thank God for what He's doing in your life and what He's done. Quit worrying about what's going on in the world today. Amen? Don't be so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God and you'll be changed from the inside out. Happiness is from the outside in. It's based on happenings. That's happen Disney World, happiest place in the world. It is till you leave. Boy, that was expensive. I ain't so happy anymore. You see, entertainment, I know what entertainment can do, you know, in, in Vegas and music and, and even rodeos. We know that. That's good entertainment. Thank God it make you feel good. But there was another message here last night that was life-changing. He wants to change your life from the inside out. God wants to change your life from the inside out. You see, that's what happens with a lot of people that aren't happy in the Lord. They don't know what's wrong. It's like a man with a fever laying on a bed and he's sweating. He can't find a cool spot on the bed. He doesn't realize there's a fever in him and as the problem is from the inside. I'm preaching better. Y'all shouting, I think. But anyway, I'm just saying. The joy of the Lord is our strength. It's not some kind of joy you can muster up. The joy of the Lord. It's the joy of the Lord. He said, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. This is a gift from God. This is what the abundant life is. This is better than the new normal. And then it goes on to say, readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it, unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down 
to its level of immaturity. Always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best of you. He develops well-formed maturity in you. In John 10 and 10, in the message, it says, A thief is only there to kill and destroy, but I came so they, the sheep, can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they have ever even dreamed of. More life and a better life than you even dreamed of. Jesus, again, in Amplified, in abundance to the full until it overflows. I'd rather die of an overdose of life than anything. Amen? And see, well, what do we do? What, what's the first thing you do? Well, what's the, the most important thing in the Bible? There was a young lawyer who said, what's the most important thing? Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Right? Who told him that? Jesus did. What's the most important thing in this book right here? He said, on, two, on these two things, on these two pegs, you can, you can hang the, the whole deal. You can hang the whole deal on this. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I used to go to these little churches sometimes and say, well, we love Brother Doyle's guitar picking, but the thing that I like the most is he loves God. I'm thinking, doesn't everybody love God? No, not everybody loves God. Love God with all your heart, with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then the second is likened to it. What is it? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. But what do you do? So what do we do to enjoy this life that is more abundant in a new normal? Amen. What do we do? First thing, there was a man I used to work with. I loved him so much. He was a barber. He raised hundreds of thousands of dollars in his barber chair and built churches all over the world. He was my co-pastor when I was pastoring. Then he went on to do mission work. He was a wonderful man. Before he died, the, first, the last thing I remember him saying, he said, Doyle, guard your heart. One of the last things Kenneth Hagin ever said, guard your heart. Guard your heart. How do you do that? Well, it's pretty easy. Jesus said in John chapter 14, and I've preached on this before, I'm sure, because God gave me a word from this one time when I was aggravated and just annoyed at something. And I couldn't go to sleep. And I kept thinking about this guy. He's just kind of said something derogatory to my, a friend of mine that schedules me. And I'm thinking, we've done a lot to help these people. How could they have that kind of an attitude? And I couldn't sleep, and I got up, and I thought, I know what I'm going to do. I could have said, I ain't going to have nothing to do with him anymore. But I didn't do that. I said, I'm going to forgive him. I'm going to release him. He has no idea who he's dealing with. He just doesn't know that we want to do something to help folks. Amen. He doesn't know that. And so I released him. I, for, I forgave him. I went back to bed, and I didn't even get up. I'm old. I get up a lot. I didn't get up. I got up the next morning. I'm thinking, wow, that's the best night's sleep. And the first thing I remember is the last thing I said. I forgive him. It brought peace in my life. And then right after that, I was riding down the road talking to my brother. I said, you know, you know, Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Don't let your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I thought, wait a minute. I said, Aubrey, he's my brother. I said, Aubrey, there's two parts to that. And so I looked it up in the Amplified Bible. He says, peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath to you. That's a lawyer legal term. Not as the world gives. Now you think about that. The peace of God that when Jesus was going to get thrown off a cliff and they were going to throw him off a cliff after at his own hometown. He didn't walk around the crowd. I like what old Oral Roberts used to say. He didn't walk around them. He didn't walk under them. He didn't walk over them. He walked right through the crowd and went his own way. That's peace. That's confidence. That's boldness. He said, I leave that with you. I give it to you. I bequeath it to you. And he said this, I now leave with you and bequeath to you, not as the world gives, not the new normal, not the old normal. The world doesn't understand it. Not as the world gives do I give to you. 
Do not let your hearts be troubled. That's something you control. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Guard your heart. You're riding out. I was, I was at this church not long ago, and we were praying for this guy, and they were praying for me for the service. So before we pray for Doyle in the service, let's pray. Brother so-and-so has a request. He went to the doctor. He got a diagnosis. So he came up, and I'm thinking, we're all wondering, what did he get diagnosis, diagnosed with? And he stood there. He said, well, lips got quivering. The doctor said, I got stress. I know. I wanted to laugh, too, but I couldn't. I'm going, are you kidding me? Everybody has stress. That was pre-COVID. I wonder what he's thinking now. He's probably been long gone. I don't know. I hope not. Everybody has stress. Well, you can take a pill for that. They wanted to put one of my kid, family on pills one time because they, one time my daughter had a seizure. They wanted to put her on this stuff all the time. And I'm not trying to tell you how to be a parent, but don't just put your kids on all these drugs all the time that alter their mind. Come on, I'll give you a pill. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. And then it goes on to say, stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. Quit it. And boy, in this time, everybody's stressed. Everybody's having a hard time. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's an a uprise in suicides. There's an uprise in, in, in murders and homicides and right down the road, and boy, people always... Giving you the wrong, the, you know, finger and, and uh, wanting to shove you off the road and road rage and all. I didn't even know what road rage was. It was, you know, five pounds of possum in the headlights tonight. That's all, you know, that's road rage. But we got road rage today. Stop allowing, just let it go. I mean, just let it go. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Paul told Timothy, Timothy, he said, your mama Lois had it, your grandma Eunice had this, and I'm convinced, he said, that you are filled with the Spirit of God. So I encourage you to stir it up, rekindle the embers of it, and fan the fire of the, the flame of God that is on the inside, or the fire of God is on the inside of you. For God has not given us the spirit of timidity or fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And it also says in that part, it says full and disciplined and self-control. But you got to guard it. You have to fan it. Keep the flame burning. Don't let the world, don't be accustomed to it. Don't conform to it. You're better than that. We're above that. And we need to raise other people up to our level. So you think you're better than people? No, God's better than what's in the world today. He's got a better deal. I'm preaching too long. I don't know what time it is. I have no idea. I'm driving to Tennessee. If y'all want to help drive me home, then okay, that'll be good. <laughs> okay. I'll try to make... <laughs> I'll try to... Uh, Get through this as soon as I can. And there's, there's a scripture I want to share with you real quick. And this is in uh, Philippians 4, one of my favorite. And he says, do not fret. That's a good guitar term, ain't it, Kelly? Don't fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer and petition, definite request. You still pray dur during this pandemic? That's why I ended up with sweet hour of prayer. You still pray during this pandemic? Yes. Say yes, Brother Dye. Do you still pray at, during this pandemic? Jesus told his disciples one time, up until now you've not asked a thing in my name, but I encourage you, ask, and the Father will give it to you that your joy may be full. Do you still pray for things during the pandemic? Yes, absolutely. And he says, in everything by prayer and petition, definite requests. Make sure you make it definite. Tell him what you want with thanksgiving. That's a key right there. With thank, thank him before you get it. Thank him every day. Even Denzel Washington says, he says, you know how I got where I'm at? Because I would thank God every day when I had nothing. I'd thank God that, I, that he was going to change my life, and he did. He said, you thank him before you get it. Then you thank him after you get it. Amen. With thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. Continue. Don't give up. 
Maybe the timing is not right yet. And God's peace, if you do this, God's peace shall be yours. That, that he, the peace of God shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And then he says, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Fix your minds on them. Love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and your mind. Guard your mind. Guard your heart. And then the next thing is, I think you need to trust God. Do you trust him? You know what that means? It means to feel safe. To feel safe and trust in the Lord with all your heart. They said it last night. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. You know, that's a very familiar scripture. Um, and I, I, I wrote it down in the message last night, late last night. Trust God. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. My good friend, I used to go to Saddleback all the time. I've ministered there so many times. Rick Warren is my friend. He's a wonderful guy. But uh, Rick Muchow was a worship leader. He wrote a song. I played it with him many times. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. I never realized that he got that from the message version of, of, uh, of, of Proverbs. Uh, and this is uh, the same thing we've read so many times before. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Proverbs 3 uh, verses 5 and 6. Listen for God's voice in everything that you do. I wrote a book about that. Listen to God. Look for him every day in everything that you do. Everywhere that you go. He is the one who will keep you on track. He's the one that will. The Bible says if we will commit our ways to him, those things that mean a lot to us, our guitar picking, the rodeo world, those connections you have, commit that to him. Whatever it is in your life that you do, it doesn't matter if you're a teacher or a rancher, whatever it is that you commit your way, those things that you have that you're passionate about, commit your way to him and he will cause even your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. Proverbs chapter 16. He will cause you to think right and not wacky. Amen. And when he does that, commit it to him, and he'll bring it to pass, according to Psalms uh, 37. You know, after I got saved, I remember I wasn't very popular, but I won that contest, like I said. And there was a boy, we were in study hall, and there's a boy named Harold that was more popular than me, and he said, hey, man, you got that little book with you? Got it, don't you? I said, you mean my Bible? I thought he was going to make fun of me. I said, he's my friend. Why would he make fun of me? He said, yeah, it had a little... It's Gideon, had a little American flag in front. I should have carried one with me. I still have several of them. He said, you got that with you? I bet you do. I said, yeah. He said, is there anything in there for me? I said, come on over. He jumped over the chair. He's behind me. And I, and I said, look at this, Romans 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thine heart that God is raising from the dead. It comes from the heart. You receive Christ from your heart. He said, thou shalt be saved. I said, Harold, do you believe that Jesus is the son of God? Yes. You believe he lived? Yes. He died? Yes. He rose again. He lives today? Yeah. You believe that? He said, I believe that. I said, man, do you want to get saved? Do you want to receive Christ in your heart? He said, yeah. He's probably thinking, why do you think I jumped over the chair? And I, and I led him in the, in the sinner's prayer right now. He accepted Christ. And I said, there's one more thing. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. The next verse. For with, with the heart, man believes. But with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You need to finish it by telling others about Christ. And he gave me one of the best compliments, Pastor Smith, anyone has ever, ever given to me. And he says, I want to be like you, Doyle. I'll tell people other, about Christ. I'll tell others about him. I won't be ashamed of him. He said it like that. That was in the ninth grade. A few months later, we went over to another school in Andrew Jackson, where my, even where my daddy went. It was built in 1924. I was walking around. I said, where's Harold? Looking for my friends. We didn't hear about Harold. 
He went to the beach. I was born in Jacksonville, Florida. He went to the beach. He was in chest deep water and the undertow took him. That's what we called it. They call it riptide. It carried him out before they could get to him. Harold lost his life. He drowned. I didn't know that. But then I thought about it. Harold is with the Lord. Harold is with Jesus. Amen. You talk about a new normal. Where I has not seen. Jesus said that in, in the first part of John. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. I prepared a place for you that you can come and be with me forever. Do you believe that? Do you believe he, every day I pray for direction and protection every single day? Do you believe he will indeed direct our steps as he's the one that makes your path straight? He's the one that will guide you. Do you believe that? You know, I was talking about Huckabee a while ago. I was on the Huckabee show. Well, what I didn't say is uh, I was in England a few years ago in Liverpool, and I got mad when I saw my name was I was playing at a club. I said, I don't like to play clubs, but I just don't. I don't feel comfortable. And this is a guitar event. And, uh, and they said, well, that's a cavern club. Oh, what? You mean where the Beatles started? I said, yeah. No kidding. I'm supposed to play there? He said, yeah. You all right with that? And I'm thinking, I sure didn't have anything to do with it. I said, yeah, I guess. And I went there and I took out my Amplified Bible and it says, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything. I am equal to anything in him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. And I want to tell you something. Last song I played was How Great Thou Art. Top of the roof came off and it was underground. I mean, it was amazing. And the Spirit of God filled the house. I felt the anointing that I grew up knowing. I said, God, you showed up tonight. That's what the anointing is. God shows up. And so they said, we love what you said. We, he said, we love what you said so much, we're going to give you a brick in the wall of fame at the Cavern Club. Years later, Jeff Carlisi, 38 Special, that grew up where that my friend across town lived with the horses. That's where all the Skinner boys grew up, all 38 Special. Right there where my buddy had that horse. And I didn't know it every Sunday. I was right there in their neighborhood. I got to know those guys. Still stay in touch with, a, with Jeff Carlisi and those guys. And they were over there together because Huckabee's a musician. He, he just loves Jeff. He's a good friend of his. And they were over there and he said, well, let's look for Doyle's. He said, we're at the cavern. Let's look for Doyle's brick. Because Jeff said, you know, Doyle's got a brick. And they, and, uh, they couldn't find it. His wife came up and said, there it is right there. I always just ask you why, you know. And there it was, right under the Beatles. Isn't that amazing? And the next thing you know, I get a call. They want me on a Huckabee show. Years later, God directs our path. He's still pulling the strings. He's still connecting the dots. And, the, and I'm up there, and I didn't even realize that. I thought, well, my Lord. And I'm on national television, and they got a picture of my brick in the Wall of Fame at the Cavern Club, where I didn't even want to go. Almost got mad. Just... Relax. Don't let your heart be troubled. Let him lead you and direct your life. Amen. I can tell you more and more. You know what the song I started with a while ago? You know, when we all get to heaven. I was walking my little pandemic pup you, out in the backyard. You walk, you walk him a lot, you know. And I, and I was out there one day and, I was, and the Lord spoke to me to call Ricky Skaggs. I called him. He said, tell him you love him. I didn't want to do it at first, but I kept, he kept like gnawing on my spirit. Call him and tell him now. Next thing you know, he said, hey, Doyle, man, love you too, brother. What are you doing so-and-so? He said, I want you at the Ryman Auditorium with me. And so I ended up playing at the Ryman with Ricky, and I thought, you know, because it's all about the gospel. And, and the, the dedication of the Ryman was 1891. I looked it up. What song were they written? What came out in 1891? When we all get to heaven. And I played that during the pandemic when nothing was going on. And praise the Lord, it went all over the world. Amen. God still directs our steps. <laughs> I was on a plane one time and my daughter says, well, Dad, I feel led to go to Florida. I said, well, have you prayed about this? I mean, I've always been involved in her life. And she said, Dad, I went over there and I, and I, and, and I interviewed with this guy named Dr. Henry. 
Well, Dr. Henry was an anesthesiologist and all that, and she wanted to be a nurse anesthetist. And I'm sitting there on this plane, well, we'll pray about it, Heidi, but you've always included me. She says, well, Dad, I just want you to know, but I really feel this is where I'm supposed to go. I met with them the other day, and they got sitters and took me out to dinner, and Dr. Henry that was in charge of it, and, and it was in Tallahassee. I said, well, I didn't, this is the first I've heard of it, and we're fixing to take off, and next thing you know, I wasn't even supposed to have been on that plane. I had a cancellation. I'm, in the last minute, I put, my, you know, my, my flight moved it, and here I am on, <laughs> and all of a sudden I dropped my phone and it starts sliding down. The next guy, he woke up and he looked real sleepy and he reached down and he got his ears, your phone. And I said, sorry, I want to, sir, I said, uh, I want to disturb you. Are you, you, do you live in Los Angeles? That's where we were heading. He said, no, I live in Tallahassee, Florida. Oh, that's strange. My daughter just told me she felt like she should move. I wanted to talk to him. He slept the whole cotton picking way. I mean, the whole way. When we landed, he woke up, and I looked over, I said, Tallahassee's a pretty nice place. Yeah, it's growing a lot. I said, my daughter's thinking about moving there. What'd she do? I said, she, well, she's just graduated. She's going to be a nurse. What kind of nurse? I didn't figure he knew what it was. He was all scruddy looking. And uh, he said, I said, a nurse and anesthetist. Took me six months to learn how to say that. He said, well, I'm an anesthesiologist. You are? He said, yeah, uh, in fact, I'm over our group. In fact, he said, has your daughter been down to interview? I said, well, she said she went down there a few days ago. She just told me about it. In fact, that was her on the phone when I dropped it. She was telling me about it. He says, well, I, I'm the head of our group. He said, there was only one young lady I know of. Is your daughter named Heidi? I said, are you Dr. Henry? She was talking about you when I dropped my phone. He said, what are the chances of this? I said, I wasn't supposed to have been on this plane. He said, neither was I. I had an emergency this morning. My family's already in. You don't think God's pulling the strings? When they brought that up to the, the rest of the board, they said, we never heard anything like this. We got to hire that girl, gave her $10,000, paid her school off, and moved her to Tallahassee. Woo! Glory to God. That's living above normal. That's living above the new normal. That's living an extraordinary life. Can I tell you one more? This is kind of scary. I probably shared it here before with the, with the robbery thing, but uh, I, I, won't, I never shared this part. There was a dear friend of mine when I was a kid and I played the patriotic medley and won the, a contest for our denomination, the national youth director for the church of God that I grew up in, where my papa was, a, I told you all that, his name was Paul Henson, national youth director. Well, years ago, in about 2000, I believe, 2001 or two, I can't remember, I think it was after 9-11, I think it was 2002, he was the national director of retired ministers. That's how long he'd been in. And so he said, oh, I'm putting together a conference. Would you play? I said, yeah. He said, would you play that patriotic medley? I said, you never forgot that. I was a teenager. He said, no, never forgot it. And then I played. He said, I want you to do How Great Thou Art. So I played How Great Thou Art. After church, had a great meeting. After church, there was hundreds of retired ministers. This old man walked up to the stage. He had the prettiest blue eyes besides Grandpa Jones I think I'd ever seen. And he had a long, crooked finger, and he looked at me, and he stuck his finger in my face. He said, son, I appreciate what you did. I enjoyed it very much, but I didn't come here to flatter you. I came here to warn you that Satan does not like what you do, and he's going to try to take your life. And I looked at him right in the eyes. I never had anybody say anything like that before. And I looked at him. I said, yes, sir. And I took a swallow. He said, keep your guard up. And he said, keep your prayer life strong. You're going to be okay. But, I'm just, but you're going to remember what I'm saying to you. And I said, yeah, yes, sir. And it kind of shook me up, you know. Still thinking about it, it does. And uh, the next week we went to California. And so it was the next Sunday. I was at this big church out there. And we got three standing ovations. My kids were there. In fact, when they were little, they said, wow, Dad, we never got a standing probation before. 
And so here we are at this church, and, and a lot of our friends were there for in the music business. And uh, after church, and we, we sold, I think, $1,500 worth of stuff. That's back when people bought CDs. Y'all, in fact, y'all don't forget, there's, in fact, um, okay, uh, shameless self-promotion. But no, we stayed around for a while, and we were going to go eat. The pastor said, my, my wife's not feeling well. I think I'll go home. Everybody went home. And we were just by ourselves. I said, well, why don't we go down to Mimi's Cafe? And so we just ordered our food, and all of a sudden I hear this commotion and, and uh, cussing and all this terrible stuff. And I thought, what in the world? I'm going to complain. This is not good. This is a family restaurant. And I thought the cooks were fighting or something. I didn't know what it was. And I turn around, and I see this big old man, and he had a Jesus shirt on. And suddenly, and he was in front of me before, but suddenly I turned around and there he is on the floor and a man with a shotgun at his head. There were four others in the restaurant with shotguns. And it's like you see it in slow motion. You follow that old black barrel up, you know, and he's pointing at this man and somebody is, you know, nobody, and they start making all their, you know, demands and I want your wallets, your cell phones, and everybody, nobody say a word. And they started working their way from one table to the other. And we were about three booths up. And I had my back to the door, which I don't do anymore. And suddenly I looked at my kids. And I had my daughter Holly, my daughter Haley, and my son Caleb. And I looked at them. And I said, okay, let's pray. And I began to pray. And the Spirit of God hovered. It was like, I can't explain it. But Jesus said, my peace. I'll leave with you my peace I give to you not as the world gives don't let your hearts be troubled don't let it be afraid he said don't be overcome with sudden fear of danger I began to pray in the spirit of the Lord it's hard to explain but suddenly when I finally look down and I see this leg next to me. I thought, what is that? It was between me and the guy with the shotgun. And I don't know how he could slide this guy. This guy was huge. And he kept sliding down and here's his leg. And, and he, I looked down at him. He said, don't you look at me, boy. And he held his gun to me and he, and he took my wallet and all this stuff. And Holly gave him all the money that we, that we had in the CDs and all that. He didn't keep my wallet. It's funny. But it was a few moments later and we just stayed real quiet didn't say anything and all of a sudden it was like I heard the manager secure the doors call the police and 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 I and I looked up and everybody started screaming in the whole place and I told my daughters I said wait 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 don't do that don't do that I said God is here with us he's protected us the one thing I asked God if they take my life don't let them touch my kids don't let them touch my daughters and, 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 and I said, let's just thank the Lord. And we joined hands. I said, let's just praise the Lord right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We begin to praise the Lord. You know, later on they said, well, you, you're probably going to have to go through counseling and all that. And I told my kids, you know, I don't think so. I said, because we know where our strength was. And we know what that was was real. You don't have time to take a crash course in prayer when you're, there's a semi coming towards you or when you're going down on a plane, which has happened to me before. You don't have time to take a crash course in getting to know God better or call your pastor. Amen. You're either connected or you're not. I'm glad I was connected. I was living in the extraordinary life. Thank you, Jesus. And, and uh, in fact, I asked the manager, where'd that big guy go that was up here? He said, yeah, he got something to, to go. And I said, then he, did he leave before they got here? I said, no, he was the first guy they held down to the floor. He said, well, he couldn't have left with them. What happened to him? Angels unawares. A little old man with the blue eyes. When I got back, I took Brother Paul Henson to lunch, and I said, by the way, he said, well, thanks for playing at that. I said, do you remember there was an old man that walked up to me? He said, Dole, I thought I knew everybody in, in this denomination, not because of long, many years I've been here. He said, I've never seen that man before. And he says, I went up to shake his hand, and I never could find him. 
life more abundantly. He says, I come that you would have life and have it more abundantly. Are you connected to him? Is he pulling the strings in your life? Is he directing your life? Is he showing you what's best for you? Are you allowing him to do that? Have you received him in your heart? Stand up if you will. Sorry I went so long, folks. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing in this world that can connect you with God like receiving him in your heart. There's not a ritual. When my little girl, granddaughter, Emmy Lou, gets baptized next week, that's not the thing that's getting her into heaven. Her receiving Jesus in her heart is what's changed her and saved her soul. You believe that? Do you believe that? Thank you, Lord. If you haven't received Christ in your heart, if you don't know in your knower, doesn't matter how old you are, how long you've been on this world, it doesn't matter if you're a young person or older person like me, you can receive Christ in your heart today. And I promise you, he will raise you up to a different life and a better life than you can ever imagine. You don't have to look at life all the time, wonder what's going on. Let me say this. People told me before, you say, you spiritualize everything. Well, I'd rather spiritualize everything than politicize everything. Why don't we start spiritualizing everything and just think on those things that are true, honest, lovely, just, pure, of a good report. Fix your minds on these things. First of all, if you're not sure if Christ is in your heart, I want you to say this with me. No one looking around right now. Everybody repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for drawing me here today. Jesus, I speak to you from my heart. You know me. You know my shortcomings and sins. Forgive me of all that. Accept me right where I am. As I accept you as Lord of my life, I give you myself. I can't give you any more than that. But because you gave yourself for me, I accept you as Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may not see stars, and you may not go out in a parking lot and hear angels sing or see camels in the parking lot. But let me tell you something. God's going to, you're going to see a difference in your life if you receive him into your heart. Now, for everybody else, start thanking God. Fix your mind on those things that are true, honest, lovely, just, and pure. If there be any virtue, any praise, say, I will fix my mind on these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I told him he might as well stay up here. Y'all can be seated if you will. Have you enjoyed Doyle Dykes today? Come on. Mm. More than that, have you enjoyed the presence of the Lord that Doyle Dykes brought with him today? Amen. To God be the glory for that. We are going to give you an opportunity to sow into his life because he sowed into yours. And I want to challenge you. Uh, we're going to ask the ushers to come and we're going to give you an opportunity to give. And uh, Doyle has, he, did, he and Wayne talking, Doyle just said, I want to come and come and be with y'all and I want to come to this bullfight. And Doyle just and I just want to say how much I thank you for that. It, you have, you're a blessing and to God be the glory for you. Yes, sir. So, uh, but I am going to do one thing and you may shoot me for it later. Not now, I wouldn't do it now, but Freebird. I've heard him play. 
I, I le- I'm a fan, and uh, as he plays free bird, I want y'all to just sow into this man, and I want to pray over this before we do, okay? Father, I love you, and I want to thank you for Doyle. I want to thank you for the privilege of um, knowing the talent that you have put in this man, and for us to see that, your talent, God, and he's used it for your glory. And I want to thank you, Father, and I want to, I pray that you would just convict every heart in this room today not to waste their talent. I pray that Doyle would be a, what, what they've seen here today and what you're doing in this man's life, you would inspire others to use the talent you've gave them for your glory. God, you're an awesome God, and I just ask you to bless this offering. I ask you to bless Doyle's life, bless his ministry, and use him mightily, continually, for your kingdom's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. So as uh, the ushers are coming, we're going to just turn Doyle loose one more time. Are you ready?
dull dots, ladies and gentlemen. Praise the Lord. I want to, yeah. Isaiah said this. This is why I wanted him to play free bird. And they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Renew your strength in Jesus today. I want to pray for you. Go by, visit Doyle at his table and uh, take some of that music home with you. Uh, I've, I've got to hear that. It's the first time I ever got to hear that live, but thank you. I wanted to hear it live. So, uh, God, we want to thank you today. We want to thank you for Doyle. I want to thank you for him being here, God. I pray your abundant blessing of provision over him, over his family over his daughter, Lord, and his grandchildren, that they would walk in that life that you have given them, God. Strengthen us as your people, and we will give you the glory for it. Keep us safe in our travels. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray today. Amen.